Hello everyone, welcome to our discussion on the type study of amphibians, Euphlictus hexadactylus. In this session, we are going to see the sense organs of frog and the main sense organs or the five main sense organs as listed here. The first one is the organ of touch or the tango receptors, the organ of taste or the taste buds, the organ of smell or olfactory organs, the organ of sight, the eyes, the organ of hearing and equilibrium. The first one, the, uh, the organ of touch or tango receptors, they are numerous, uh, or the touch receptors, they are found on the uh, skin. Uh, there are numerous cutaneous sense organs or receptors present in the epidermis of the skin. Uh, they are sensitive to uh, various stimuli like touch, chemicals, temperature, humidity, light, pain, etc. So this is about the tango receptors coming to the taste buds. So these are present uh, in uh, present in small papillae on the tongue and on the floor and the roof of the buccal cavity. The third one is the organ of smell or the olfactory organ. So the olfactory organ which is uh, it is uh, seen in the epithelial or these uh, receptors for this uh, seen on the epithelial lining of the two nasal chambers and these are considered or these receptors are considered as the organ of smell. Uh, it contain the receptors uh, which also contain a tuft of cilia. So this is about the three uh, uh, the receptors like the tango receptors, uh, the taste buds and the olfactory organs or the olfactory receptors which are seen uh, in the lining of the nasal chambers. Next is the organ of uh, sight, the eyes. See the organ of uh, the eyes of frog is uh, almost globular in structure and uh, as in the case of humans they are placed in the cavity in the skull which is called as the orbit. The wall of the uh, eye is uh, mainly made up of three layers. As you can see here the three layers. Uh, so the outermost layer uh, this particular layer is called as the uh, sclerotic cartilage. It is opaque uh, in structure and because of the cartilaginous uh, nature, it is the one which is providing uh, the particular shape for the eyes. The sclerotic cord, when reaches the anterior end, uh, it becomes or uh, the particular sclerotic cord, uh, it, uh, the anterior part is uh, transparent. And uh, that transparent sclerotic coat, as you can see, uh, the as my pointer is moving, this particular area of the sclerotic coat, and that is called as the uh, the, uh, the uh, transparent cornea. And this cornea is covered by another transparent covering, which is called as the conjunctiva. So uh, that was the outermost layer of the eye, the outermost layer, which is called as the scleroid, uh, scleroid a sclerotic layer which is uh, uh, made up of connective tissue and also some uh, also is cartilaginous and hence it is opaque except in the anterior region and it is because of this cartilaginous nature it is providing or it is the one which is uh, which gives the shape to the eyes the anterior part of this sclerotic cord is uh, transparent forming the cornea Above the cornea, there is another transparent layer which is called as the transparent membrane which is called as the conjunctiva. The middle uh, layer, as I said, there are three layers. The middle layer is called as the choroid layer. As you can see, the choroid layer, it is closely uh, at or closely opposed to the sclerotic layer in the uh, rest of the uh, area but when it comes to front it forms uh, two or uh, except in the front here it forms uh, as you see it forms a curtain like structure and this curtain like structure is called as the uh, is uh, called as the iris in the center of this iris there is an opening or when it forms a curtain like structure there will be an opening and this opening is called as the pupil because when it forms a curtain like this, there will be a small opening and this small opening as you can see here, this is called as a pupil. Immediately behind the iris, you can see the lens. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the feature of this lens is that it does not have the power of accommodation. 
hence when uh, the frogs are on land it can see only the objects which are uh, near to it the cavity of uh, the eyeball is again divided into uh, because of the presence of this lens uh, it is again divided into two chambers uh, the front one is called as the aqueous chamber and this one is called as the vitreous chamber the innermost layer or the third layer is the uh, retina this is the photosensitive part of the eye uh, there are two types of photoreceptors in this uh, in this layer the rod cells and the cord cells which are present on the retina when the light falls on them they are stimulated and the impulses are sent uh, through the optic nerve to the brain so this is the portion through which the optic nerve passes where the retina is absent and hence this spot is called as the blind spot the eyes are moved into different directions by a set of six muscles uh, and the field of uh, vision of the two eyes do not usually overlap uh, and hence uh, frogs have only uh, something which is called as the monocular type of vision so this is about the sense organ of uh, the organ of sight which is the eyes coming to the organ of hearing and equilibrium uh, the ear is a primary organ of uh, hearing and also for uh, the sen sensation of hearing and also for balance in addition to the inner ear the frog also have a middle ear the outer ear or the particular structure which is called as a pinna is absent in the case of uh, um, amphibians the outer wall of the uh, middle ear or the middle ear chamber uh, is fused with the skin uh, which forms something which is called as the tympanic membrane or uh, what is called as the eardrum and you can see that it is a stapes which is connecting the tympanic membrane and and an opening or a membranous opening in the uh, opening to the inner ear which is usually called as the oval window so it is that uh, it is a stapes the bone which is a stapes or the columella oris which is connecting the tympanic membrane to the oval window so oval window is uh, is a membranous uh, a membranous structure which is uh, the opening to the middle ear Uh, it is attached to the inner ear surface of the uh, 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 at one end this particular uh, the columella attaches the uh, tympanic membrane at one end and the oval window to the or uh, to the oval window at the other end the eustachian tube is present uh, which uh, is the connection with the pharynx and the function of eustachian tube is to maintain the pressure coming to the inner ear so this much so this much was the middle ear coming to the inner ear so this is something which is called as the inner ear so the inner ear or the membranous labyrinth lies in a capsule or the cavity you can see a cavity and this particular structure these structures is called as the inner ear and the cavity is called as the auditory capsule and this particular structure it uh, mainly can be divided into two regions so this red structure it can be divided into three regions mainly the semicircular uh, canals and the vestibule the vestibule is again divided into two uh, they are the uh, the utriculus which is on the dorsal side and a sac like portion called as the sacculus so uh, these ring like structure are the uh, semi circular canals and you can see a sac like structure here which is pointed as sacculus and also there is a structure uh, which is called as the uh, is called as the uh, utricular so this particular portion is the uh, the middle portion of the uh, so if i point it this particular portion is the utriculus and this one is the sacculus together that they are called as the vestibule and there is a small dilation in the posterior wall as you can see like the term lagina so there is a small projection or a, a swelling like structure that is on the uh, dorsal wall of the utriculus 
uh, on the uh, legena is a dilation on the posterior wall of the uh, not utriculus on to the sacculus so within the uh, membranous labyrinth or uh, 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 inside the structure uh, there are patches of sensory cells innervated by the cranial nerves so this particular membranous the entire membranous labyrinth that is the semicircular canals the utriculus the sacculus etc they are filled with uh, the perilymph a narrow tube called as the ductus endolymphaticus arises from the sacculus that duct enters the skull and ends in the endolymphatic sac over the hindbrain so this is the organ of uh, hearing and the organ of equilibrium or balance so the main organ of equilibrium is nothing but this particular structure which is called as a membranous labyrinth which consists of the semicircular canal and the vestibule the vestibule consists of two parts or is made up of two parts the sacculus and the utriculus so this is about the uh, sense organs and uh, next we also will discuss about the excretory system of uh, uh, frogs so excretory system uh, in frogs is a pair of kidneys which is lying uh, in the dorsal side of the body cavity they are elongated dark red in color and the excretory units are the nephrons so uh, the waste materials are separated from the blood, uh, blood through the uh, longitudinal canal lying on the outer margin of the kidney posteriorly they continues as the ureter or the wolfian duct the ureters open into the cloaca uh, there is a bilobed elastic chamber which is called as the urinary bladder opening into the ventral wall of the cloaca the cloaca is a median chamber into which uh, the rectum also open uh, the urinogenital ducts and the urinary bladder also open uh, to the same region the cloaca opens outside by a sphincter cloacal aperture between the base of the hind limb so this is a, so the main excretory organs are the kidneys uh, and they are mostly associated or uh, they or uh, they also uh, lie uh, very close with the uh, reproductive system both the male reproductive system as well as the female reproductive system thanks for hearing